Welcome back to the final GOP presidential primary debate of 2023. We're going to talk about our college campuses. Starting with you, Ambassador Haley. House Republicans yesterday hauled elite university presidents up to Capitol Hill to answer for the displays of anti-Semitism on college campuses. These leaders, including the president of Harvard, were asked whether calling for the genocide of the Jews would violate school policies against harassment and intimidation. All of them said it would depend on the context, including whether that speech veers into conduct. How do you think these schools and the rest of society should balance the imperative of free speech against the need to prevent radical activists from harassing and intimidating others? It was disgusting to see what happened. You know, if this had been the KKK that was doing protests on those campuses, every one of those college presidents would have been up in arms. This is just as bad. The idea that they would go and allow that kind of pro-Hamas protest or agree with the genocide of Jews and try and say that they needed context on that, there is no context to that. This is what we need to do to deal with it. First of all, we have got to get foreign money out of our universities. You've got Arab money, you've got Chinese money, you've got others. We need to go to every university and say you either take foreign money or you take American money, but the days of taking both are over. The second thing we need to do... The second thing we need to do is we need, Biden made a mistake not including anti-Zionism in the definition of anti-Semitism. If you don't think that Israel has a right to exist, that is anti-Semitic. We will change the definition so that every government, every school has to acknowledge the definition for what it is. The third thing is we really do need to ban TikTok once and for all. And let me tell you why. For every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok every day, they become 17% more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas based on doing that. We now know that 50% of adults 18 to 25 think that Hamas was warranted in what they did with Israel. That's a problem. When campuses also don't go and protect when they have these rallies and you've got students that are scared, we need to go to these universities and say, if you're not going to protect these students, if you're not going to acknowledge anti-Semitism, we'll take your tax-exempt status away. That'll fix it, and that'll take care of it for good. Staying with you, Ambassador Haley. On October 6th, the Israeli government thought it had a clear-eyed view of the threat from Hamas. In fact, according to the New York Times, it even had Hamas's attack plan and dismissed it as an aspiration. The Israelis were wrong. In our country, the FBI director told the Senate panel just yesterday that he sees, quote, blinking red lights everywhere and that the threat level has, quote, gone to a whole nother level since October 7th. Which of the threats facing our country do you worry could blindside us? What worries me and what keeps me up at night is what happens between now and Election Day while Joe Biden's in office. That's what worries me more than anything else. But I'll tell you that America right now is acting like it's September 10th. We better remember what September 12th felt like because it only takes one. And whether you're looking at open borders that are allowing people to come in, Iran knows the easiest way to get to America is through the southern border. And we're not doing anything to stop it. We've got to get the foreign infiltration out of our country, whether it's in our schools, whether it's on our social media, whether it's we need to stop all foreign lobbying that's happening to members of Congress. And we need to start securing America again. Until we do that, we are going to be at threats. We've got to look at Iran, China, and Russia want to destroy the West. We have to start acting strong again. We've got to start protecting Americans. Right now, Americans don't feel protected, and we're not doing anything to strengthen it. So Joe Biden continues to be a problem. That'll change on Election Day. Governor 